Hi, I'm Rowan from Vantage Admissions. In this video, we're going to look at a recent Oxford Maths interview question. If you're interested in more interview questions or general support with your interview preparation, do remember to subscribe and to visit our website. Now, before watching this video, you might like to pause and have a go at the question yourself. In the first part of this question, we're asked whether the algebraic expression 2a squared plus 2b squared can be written as a sum of two perfect squares. So for the avoidance of doubt, we mean written algebraically in this way. I'm not saying for particular choices of a and b, can we identify this as two squares added together? But I'm specifically saying, can I actually write a formula in terms of a and b? which is two squares that, that add to give that, when we expand the bracket, say. And likewise, we should think here of a and b as integers, and I want a sum of two squared integers, so I can't use root 2a and root 2b, for example, as my squares. So the interviewer will always be happy to clarify these sorts of points. So this is a question where, to some extent, we have to make a bit of a, a leap at the beginning and decide whether it feels like the answer should be yes, whether it feels like the answer should be no, and then we can go about trying to prove it. So if we think the answer might be no, we could consider trying to construct a divisibility proof. Maybe we could think about oddness or evenness, or remainders when divided by three, that is properties modulo three, for those familiar with modular arithmetic. And maybe we could reason something like, you know, the divisibility properties of this expression by three, the remainders, the possible remainders, are incompatible with the remainders we could get, say, for a sum of two squares. So some sort of divisibility argument would presumably the way we'd show it can't be done. But maybe we should start by trying to find a way to write it as a sum of two squares. And then if we really can't seem to find two, then we might uh, think about whether we can construct a, a proof why it can't be done. So they're not looking in an interview for us to have any sort of superhuman algebra abilities. They're not expecting us to be able to magically spot really complicated multi-term algebraic factorizations without writing any workings. They're looking to see, can we break down a problem? Can we think systematically? Or can we come up with a good strategy? So the answer, if there is one, must be simple. The question is, rather than trying to leap straight to an answer, which might not be easy to do, can we start to think about a step towards an answer. And a nice step towards an answer might be, well, what type of perfect squares could potentially be involved? If I am going to take a sum of two perfect squares to give me this, can I at least think of some candidates for some plausible squares I might use? So I guess in theory, I could literally use a squared and b squared. Now, they're not going to work on their own because I need a way to get two of each, but those are some perfect squares that conceivably could have a role. Now, if not these alone, they're not going to do, what else could potentially have a role to play? Well, what about, for example, a plus b squared? Because in the expansion of a plus b squared, yes, I get a squared and b squared, which is really good. I also get a cross term, which I don't want, but maybe there's some way to get rid of the cross term. So this is a really nice opportunity to show the interviewer that we are very much switched on with regards you know, what we're trying to achieve. We can identify, well, OK, this thing has some good terms, but we can hone in on what the problem is. The fact there is an unwelcome cross term. Don't be afraid to state the obvious that this term is not so welcome. Well, thinking about it, if I'm considering using a plus b squared, why not use a minus b squared? Because that also generates me an a squared and a b squared and it generates uh, the cross term with a minus on. So you might now already see where this is going. If I add these two together, I'm going to cancel out the cross term and get exactly what I want. But I didn't need to be thinking that far ahead. I didn't need to realize exactly where it was going to start to take the initiative to ask the simpler question of just what types of squares might conceivably be relevant. So it's so important with these interviews to adopt an incremental mindset. You're not looking for a kind of instant flash of inspiration. So we can see that the answer is clearly yes, because if I add these two things together, which are clearly perfect squares, I get something which works. OK, so now in part two, presumably they would only ask this second part once you finish the first part. We're considering a more general expression, which is u squared plus v squared 
times a squared plus b squared. So obviously what we've just done is really the special case when u equals v equals 1. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean just because that case worked that this really can be done for all u and v. That being said, pragmatically, the last part worked. It seems likely that we're going to be able to use the same idea to get a working expression for this one too. So I suppose for this one, it would be nice to first of all expand the brackets just so that we make completely clear exactly what it is that we're actually trying to generate. What are the terms we want to generate from our squares? Now, suppose that you didn't manage to get the first part very easily and the interviewer to an extent had to spoon feed you. Well, the idea was let's write down some plausible squares and just stare at them and look for a good combination. Well, now we can show that we can take the initiative to use the same idea, that we can try to write down some squared expressions without necessarily seeing straight away what the final result will be, just some plausible squares that might start to generate some of the right terms. So let's just jump in, take the initiative and start doing that. Well, I want something with a u, a, u squared a squared, so I'd probably like something with a u a in it. And I'd also like something with a v b all squared. So I might like to consider u a plus or minus v b squared. That will generate me some of the good terms. It's just one of many things we could write down. So what would this give me? It would give me a u squared a squared, which I want. It would give me a v squared b squared, which I want. And depending on the plus or minus choice in the bracket, it would give me two lots of a cross term, 2ab uv. Now, maybe we can cancel out that cross term by direct analogy with what we achieved previously. So what could I have done differently? What else could I write down other than the freedom to vary the square? Well, in terms of u, I don't only want u squared a squared, I also want u squared b squared. So what if we write down an equivalent expression where I swap over the a and the b essentially? Well, that's going to give me u squared b squared, the other term I want there. v squared a squared, the other term I want there. And happily for us, we see it generates the same cross term. So now that we've taken the initiative to put this down, to write down really the only sensible things that will generate the right sorts of squared terms, we realize that obviously there are lots of combinations we use, or we can use that will work. So for example, if I take the first bracket with a plus, and I take the second bracket with a minus, then I'm going to get exactly what I want with a perfect cancellation plus minus of the cross terms. So it's not about having some superhuman ability to just spot really clever algebraic factorizations in one go. It's about being prepared to experiment and to creep incrementally towards the answer. I hope you found this question interesting. Comment below to let us know what you'd like to see next. And if you want to see more interview questions and advice on interview preparation, do remember to subscribe. If you're interested in more intensive support with your interview preparation, do also remember to visit our website. And thank you very much for watching.